Welcome to the Live Big Podcast, where real estate expert Nick Paynes shows you that everyone can build wealth through real estate investing. Nick and his featured guests will give you the tools, resources, and expert information you need to leverage real estate into a wealth building strategy. So you can stop worrying about your nine to five and start to live big. Here's Nick with today's episode. All right. Uh, welcome, everybody, to episode five of the Live Big podcast. Uh, I'm your host, Nick Paynes, and today we are talking about mindset. And I am very happy to have uh, Gavin Higashi here with me today. He is a title rep for Chicago Title uh, here in the Denver metro area. So we've worked closely together on um, some transactions. And uh, well, I think I've known you since. I started probably five, six years ago. Sounds about right. So um, anyway, uh, Gavin is a a highly successful uh, sales rep in the title insurance business. Um, He's worked in the industry 20, is it 24 years now? 24 years, man. Wow. Yeah. That's crazy. So 24 years, um, he's worked with some of the highest producing uh, agents in the nation, um, in the mountain region, in Colorado. Um, And he himself is a uh, top producing uh, title rep. And I think you're the top producing title rep for each of the last 12 years in the Denver metro area. Uh, On the list. On the list. He's on the list. He's modest. So um, anyway, well, appreciate you uh, joining us today. We're going to talk uh, about mindset and and kind of how that uh, affects our daily lives, affects our potential successes, and maybe sure. maybe holds us back. And um, I I, I kind of want to start off by touching on our initial conversation when I first talked to you and said, "Hey, man, you want to come come on the podcast?" Um, I I like to bring influential people, and you you, you came to mind just because you're you're such a you know, a force in the title industry. And, um, I thought of you and I know that you're highly respected and well-respected in your industry, but when I thought, man, you know, I came to, I came to talk to you and said, what could you, what would you like to talk about? What would you like to contribute? And and you said to me, man, I'm all about mindset. Can we talk about that? So tell me, tell me a little bit about that. And it's, um, I, I think that there's all kinds of stories that can kind of go into why your mindset is a certain way or, or uh, how you've developed into the mindset that you have. I think um, it's all in our upbringing, right? So I, I think I, uh, I love my mother. She's amazing. Um, but definitely kind of always kind of found the, the negative or the pessimistic view of things. And uh, that's probably some of her upbringing as well. But um, I, I've always tried to work out of that. And I, the only way I've ever been able to figure out how to get out of um, kind of starting in a negative place is, is to constantly feed um, positive um, growth, uh, just constantly pushing towards a positive, right? Uh, so if that's if that's podcasts or reading or uh, just your your daily routine um, revolving around more positive influence, it has kind of forced me into more of a positive mindset. Um, so I think what's helped me is, is no know, knowing and understanding kind of where I started and where I came from to try to, to pull out of that. Um, and the only way I've ever found to do that is, is, is through growth and through constantly learning. Great. And I think that's like a, that's a, I think that's a great segue into the, the first thing I want to talk about, which is a um, kind of having a growth versus a fixed mindset. And um, I was thinking about talking about this a little bit later, but uh, you, you've already brought it up because the, the, the fixed versus growth. Well, let's do this. The fixed versus growth mindset. Tell me what, what, you know, how, how would you describe that? How would you define a fixed versus a growth mindset? Sure. So fixed is basically, um, you believe that you're only going to be as smart as you are. You're going to only going to have so much information or only, uh, only know how to do certain things because of, of, uh, it, it, you're born into it. Right. Like, right. um, there's no, there's no changing off of that, that mindset or intelligence or, or whatever. It's always at a baseline. Um, a growth mindset is, is you just realize that you can always be better and you can, you realize that you, you can grow and you can continually add to, um, how you think and how you do things and how you treat people and uh, how you show up. Um, you got to constantly know that there's opportunity to be better in that. So for me, growth is, um, 
it's a, for me, growth is constant. Like the moment I think that there's not an opportunity to be better or grow, then I think I, uh, I get sidetracked or I slow down or I lose momentum or, uh, I just, I, I, I don't think there's another step, right? Like right. If, I, if I don't believe that I can continually get better, then I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna improve that. And I think that plays a part, for example, like in your modesty about your production as a title rep, right? Like if you th- if you're like, man, I'm the best or I'm the top of my game or I'm, I'm the, I, I'm the best that can be. There's no, there is no growth mindset to that. Right. So like, you know, I was, I was attuned to, uh, I do a lot of self-evaluation. I have my team do a lot of self-evaluation and, and I always tell people don't race it. Don't rate yourself a 10. Right. Even if you think you're a 10 in your mind, like don't rate yourself a 10 because a 10 doesn't leave any room for improvement. And if you don't leave any room for improvement, you don't believe that there's any room for growth. And, and so, you know, again, coming from, you know, your, your, your upbringing, the fixed versus growth mindset, which you, you, you stated it beautifully, which is that the fixed mindset is, is you believe that traits, whether they're personality or intelligence or ability, um, these personal traits, they're innate or right. they're ingrained or they're they're you were born with them right like right. oh um he's just he's musically gifted he was he was born to play the guitar he was born to the that's a fixed mindset right. the growth mindset is i've never touched an instrument in my life but i can learn to play the guitar right right and so the you know first of all trying to understand whether we believe that the the mindset itself is innate right? The, the growth versus fixed mindset. Hey, is, is that innate? Right. Yeah. And I, I don't believe it is. I believe it's taught. Like you yeah. said, it's your upbringing, right? So did your parents constantly tell you don't do things right. Or don't try things or, and, and not, not in a bad way, but did they let you make your own mistakes? Yeah. You know, did they let you go out and try things? You know, maybe they know that, you're not a great athlete. They can tell because they're, you know, you're three years old, four years old, five years old. You're constantly falling on your face. You have no coordination and you go, mom, dad, I want to play soccer. And do they tell you, why don't you try this violin instead? Or do they go, yeah, let's go play soccer. Yeah. How do you know me so well? I mean, I'm not athletic. (laughs) (laughs) I was told no all the time. Just kidding. I, um, yeah, I guess I go back to this quote. Um, I think Michael Jordan said it a while, uh, uh, several people have said it, but basically, um, hard we- hard work beats talent when talent doesn't work hard, right? Like, so you can have that innate talent or that ability, but if you don't continue to work hard at developing and growing that, or even if you're not aware of that talent, um, then it's never going to get to its full potential because you you've never challenged it, right? So you have to challenge our innate behaviors, right? So I, I feel like. Um, for me, yeah, growing up, there was very specific things that I, I wasn't super great at, but I, I know what I was good at. And that was, you know, talking to people and just showing up and having fun and and enjoying being around people. And I still, to this day, enjoy doing that, but I continually add, how can I be better in a situation with people? Or how can I, um, show up in a better, uh, in a better mindset or in a better personality or whatever for that, for that moment when I'm when I'm around people, which I feel like is what I enjoy doing the most. Right? Sure. Yeah. So, yeah. And I think, you know, again, the, the, as, as kids, especially as, as babies, when, when we have our caretaker and that person tells us, Hey, Hey, don't do that. Don't touch that stove. Yeah. Right. And which is great. We need that there. We need that person there. But those limitations that we receive at a younger age, those, those translate later in life to, to not take risk. Totally. Right. To not take risk. Right. And, and sure. Don't, nobody should touch a stove. A kid shouldn't touch a stove. An adult shouldn't, nobody should touch a stove, but there are risks that we should take in life. Right. There are times we should say yes to opportunities. There are times we should, we should, you know, step outside our comfort zone. The problem is if we're brought up in a situation or we're brought up in a, in a, in a family that doesn't take risks that doesn't show that and doesn't allow us to take risks yeah. then this fixed versus mind this fixed versus growth mindset it's it's not innate right in fact i think a growth mindset is innate right that's that's what 
children do. That's what babies do. They touch things that they don't understand what they are. You know, they don't realize what danger is. They don't understand what risk is. So we're actually born with a growth mindset, but we are taught to have a fixed mindset. Totally. And that's the problem. And that's why we see so many people held back from what potentially what their, what their ultimate potential is or what their growth could be. Right. Right. And so I think that, that that's a hard thing for us to balance. Right. I, I can't remember your parent. You have kids. Yeah. Yes. Yeah, two boys, two boys. How old? Uh, 20 and 17. Okay. So your, your kids are older. I've got a, a six year old and a three year old. And so we constantly think like, are we going to allow them to try all the things that they want to try? I try to, I try to say yes. Right. Like yeah. with my kids, I try to say yes. Like, Hey, I want to try skiing. Great. Let's go try skiing. I want to try ice hockey. Great. Let's go try ice hockey. Right. Because I've always had this really interesting thought in the back of my head. What if I would have been like the best lacrosse player that ever lived, but I never tried it. Right. Right. I've never played lacrosse. I've never tried it. What if I would have been really good at it, but I never right. knew because I didn't say yes to the opportunity that was presented. Right. And I think that is, now that's a stretch. Right? right. But I think for the most part, we can understand that you can't be good at things you don't try. 100% agree with you. And so I think that it's really important for us to understand that innately, we are born with growth mindsets. Yeah, so people that. that are out there that don't have a growth mindset, just understand that you were taught that you can unlearn things yeah. and you can relearn things. So when people have the fixed mindset of, I can't, I'm just not good at math or I can't play sports or whatever. No, you can. You are just told you can't. That's the problem. Yeah, it's funny you say that, man. I, I think I'm, my brain immediately goes to my oldest son, um, 20 years old, uh, went to school in Hawaii. Uh, it just wasn't the right fit. So he, he just moved back in August. And um, he's just kind of trying to figure out what he wants to do in life. And it's like, you really, I think once you kind of have an understanding of of what makes you happy and what you enjoy doing, almost like you have self-reflection of, of knowing kind of who you are and, and what you're good at then I feel like you can go and try and do a bunch of different things, but it hopefully it kind of revolves around the things that you think are going to make you happy. And, and maybe that changes, but again, you have to go try stuff. But if it, if it's focused around things that you already believe that you want, um, I think that it becomes much more efficient um, and uh, time efficient in the long run. Right. So if, right. if he's, if he's making, um, if he's taking risks or, or trying new things, um, but it does kind of revolve around something he does enjoy, I think that he'll get to the success quicker because of that. Right. So, and I think, you know, to, to use an analogy, like if you were, you know, let's say you were, you, you began a, a class to learn a second language or another language you've never spoke before. And you got called up to the front of the class in the second week. And, yeah. and, and, you know, the teacher started grilling you with questions there's two ways that you can look at that. You can freeze up. You can be upset. You can go, I'm stupid. I don't think I, I don't know the answers to these things. Or you can realize that you're all there to learn together. Right. Right. And the teacher is just trying to help push you outside of your comfort zone yeah. and that it can be used as a learning opportunity. Right. So it's the same exact situation. You and I both get pulled up to the front of the classroom. It's how you view it. Yeah. The situation doesn't change. It's how you perceive that situation as an, as to whether it's a positive or a negative impact upon you. Yeah. And the, the, when we think about leadership and we think about entrepreneurial spirit and people who are successful in life, it's like, these are the people that take risks. These are the people that take um, steps to actually put themselves into positions that are uncomfortable to put themselves into positions that maybe are, are outside of their, their box, what they're used to. And those are the people that tend to have that growth, right? Because Absolutely. if we're fixed and we stay inside that box and we decide, man, this, that's not for me. And that's not for me versus I'm going to try it. Yep. I'm going to try it. And I'm going to see what happens. Right. My best example of that is, um, so when I first got into title, uh, I was, 
working kind of as a support person. So I was doing like marketing postcards, pulling data, print labels. Um, and I was kind of on the sales support side. So I was supporting all the other salespeople to go out and, and go get business. And I was always, um, I didn't have the confidence and I was always scared of, of being responsible to try to go get clients so I could make money. Right. Like I was always scared of that. I like, I like knowing I had a fixed income, right. Knowing I was going to get paid a certain salary and show up every day. I knew what things I had to get done so I could get that fixed salary. Sure. And the moment I realized and really just took the, the chance of getting into sales, um, just realizing like how much more opportunity there was not just financially, but, um, mentally and, um, uh, like, not spiritually, but like emotionally, I, I just enjoyed sales so much more once I got past the fear of going into sales. Right. Yeah. So the, I, I still remember when I decided that I wanted to go into sales, I was very, very nervous. Like I, I wanted to make sure I had something to fall back on. I had, had some kind of a base. And uh, I realized the moment that that base was gone is when I really kind of excelled um, because I knew I had no other choice, but to, to go figure it out. Uh, I didn't have that, that check coming in every single two weeks that I knew was going to be there. Right. So, um, and now looking back in hindsight, I wish I would have made that decision earlier. Really? Right? Yeah. No regret. Right. But I, uh, if I could have learned that when I was 20 versus when I was 27 or 28, then, um, who knows where I, who, who knows sure. what that would have done. Right. I mean, think about the opportunities that all of us would have if we knew now, you know, knew back then what we know now. And, totally. and, and I'm the same way, man. I wish I would have gotten into real estate a lot earlier than I did. Um, but ultimately the experiences that I had prior to that were, were beneficial to, 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 you know, my career now. And so yeah. while those experiences were important, you know, it, any time that we get comfortable, yeah. there's always an opportunity cost to comfort, right? And so when, when we're thinking about, man, I, I, I'd rather not leave my salary job where I know I make $72,000 a year with benefits, even though there's a possibility for me to make $120,000 a year and, and maybe not have benefits, right? Well, my argument would be pay your own, if you're making 120, pay your own benefits, you're still going to net 30, $40,000 more than you were before. Right. Yeah. And so the, but it's the, it's that comfort, right? It's that comfort that, that holds us back. And, and again, that opportunity cost, I don't know that you can actually put a price on it because sometimes that opportunity cost could be financial. Yeah. Um, it could be time. Uh, it could be stress. It could be effort. Um, it, there's so many ways to, to look at it and um, put whatever value to you, there is, you know, your value could be time. It could be money. Um, but every decision that we make, there's an opportunity cost to. Um, and so I, I just think it's important and, and to, to kind of wrap up the, the, the fixed versus growth mindset piece um, is just to, for those of you, if you go through the practice and, and I have a, I have a link in the description for, for today's episode that I'd like you, you to go and look at, and it'll describe a little bit more about, um, what a fixed mindset is and versus a growth mindset. Um, and you can actually take a little quiz to see yourself. Like, what are you fixed? You know, are, do you have a fixed or do you have a growth mindset? And if you find that you have a fixed mindset, that's okay. Because just remember back to the, one of the first things we said, that's taught. Yeah. Innately, you, you were a growth mindset person and that can be retaught and that can be relearned. So, the idea here is if, if everybody can be in that growth mindset, if everybody can get to that growth mindset, everybody benefits, okay? Without the growth mindset, we don't have entrepreneurs. We don't have people that create big business and big industry and innovation um, and have the have what the United States has allowed us to do over the last you know 100 years, 200 sure. years, the, the innovation that's been created by the freedom to do what we want to do and step outside our box. So um, with that, I want to transition into a, a second, a second type of mindset that we talk a lot about in our industry in our, in our real estate industry. Right. I know, I know that you guys in title talk a lot about this because um, you guys teach classes to agents and you, and, and, and this is something that we, we speak about constantly. And in, in my opinion is one of the most important pieces 
of your success. And that is a, what we call scarcity versus an abundance mindset. Um, so I, I know that you're familiar with those terms. Talk to me about what those mean to you. Awesome. So an abundant mindset means that there's enough out there for everybody. And we just want to be able to help and support everybody in getting, getting to that point of it's out there, right? Like no one's holding you back. Nothing's holding you back from getting what you want, um, uh, either in life or financially or with your family. No one's holding you back from that. Uh, there's plenty of opportunity, especially again, living in the United States. Like we have, we should have such an abundant mindset because we have so much opportunity, right? Uh, scarcity mindset is, is that, uh, there's not enough to go around. Um, we're only going to get so much and we don't either deserve, or there's no opportunity for us to get more or earn more or build more because there's, there's nothing more to get. So if, if we think that way, it just is thinking so closed and small. Um, there's just, you're, you're talking yourself out of any kind of growth or any kind of opportunity for your future right off the bat, because you're only thinking so small. Right. Um, a lot of the speakers or event, um, seminars and stuff that I go to, they all talk about having that big audacious goal or uh, just the biggest goal that you can think of. I'm, I'm a big Gary Vaynerchuk fan. And one of the things he talks about is he wants to own the New York Jets someday. That's his goal. Um, I think he'll get to that someday, but it's so out there in his brain. He's got to continually build every day and do every day to get to that long-term goal. Um, but he's also not closed minded to think that it can't happen. Sure. He knows it can happen. He's <laughs> thinking very abundantly like it, it, it can happen. Um, the other, the other way that I see abundance and scarcity come up is basically in our interactions. Like I think very, abundantly i try to think very abundantly of um, other people so if, if i see uh, another sales rep or another real estate agent if, if there's an opportunity for me to give and support or uh, give financially or give in time whatever that might be that i think can help them grow um i'm gonna do that versus trying to hoard it for myself or keep my time or my energy to myself sure so yeah yeah, I think that, um, you know, we talk a lot about the, those two mindsets and, and especially because real estate is an industry where we see, gosh, it's probably even more lopsided than this, but you know, the, the, the standard 80, 20 rule where, you know, 20% of the people do 80% of the work or 80% of the business and in, in real estate, I think it's even more lopsided than that. It's probably closer to like 90, 10, or even 95, five, the top 5% performing agents probably do somewhere, you know, 95%. around 95% of the business because the disparity is so large. And the idea is with those people who are so highly successful and the people who are top producers that, there's no reason for them to kind of hoard or keep their right. success stories to themselves, right? right? The idea is that by sharing those success stories and by helping people with maybe their systems or um, whatever, uh, you know, whatever strategies they have in place, by sharing those and allowing other people to be successful, we grow as a whole, right? Yeah. Everybody, everybody grows together. And so the idea behind an abundance mindset <clears throat> as well is just that, we believe that there's plenty of resources for everyone. So if I'm a top producing real estate agent and, you know, I've got these, these great tools and these great strategies that I, that I use to get business, the idea behind a scarcity mindset is that I keep those to myself and not, those are, those are proprietary and nobody has access to those. Or I can have an abundance mindset and say, I'm happy to share these tools so that other people can be successful because the reality is, is, is again, it comes down to this belief that there's not enough resources out there for people. Right. But if you and I, and, and I've been, how long have you been in the Denver metro area? How long have you been here? Uh, born and raised. Okay. So you've been here a long time. I have too. <laughs> okay. So I've been here my whole life, right? The idea, if you were a real estate agent and, and I'm also a real estate agent and we, the chances that you and I go on the same listing appointment, right, to the same client are slim to none. Very slim. The chances that your sphere of influence, your database of people and my database of people, you know, outside of our real estate connections, but the, the chances that we share somebody there yeah. is very slim. And the chances that not only 
do we share somebody there that, but we also end up at that same appointment It's very slim. So the, I'm not feeding my competition. I'm not, I'm not saying here, take this and then take business from me. In fact, because I have a growth mindset and I'm continuing to educate and I'm continuing to learn because I have confidence in my own abilities, I welcome the, I welcome the challenge. I welcome the challenge. Hey, use my resources and try to be better at them than me. Yep. Right. And so as long as we have enough confidence in ourselves to say, I can share all of my stuff, it's not going to affect my business. In fact, it's going to come back to me because that abundance mindset always comes back to you. And the fact that Gavin will remember down the road, all the help that I gave him or all the strategies or all the things that I gave him to be a successful real estate agent. And when he goes to retire, or he goes to, you know, maybe move on to something else. Who's he going to refer his business to? Me, yeah. because I helped him along in his business. And that's one of the biggest things that we see is this, this mentality. And it's this, not just in the, in the real estate industry, it's everywhere that we don't share our resources, that we don't help other people. Yeah. One of our most important, my, my real estate team, our number one core value is what we call service regardless of opportunity. Yeah. The idea is that we help people regardless if we feel that we will benefit from it. It, it doesn't matter. You help because we want other people to be successful too. Yeah. And part of that fixed mindset is not enjoying seeing other people grow. You know, if, if, if you're comparing yourself to others, stop comparing yourself to others, compare yourself to yourself. Yeah. Are you better than you were yesterday? Are you going to be better tomorrow than you were today? Like that is the, that is the idea. And so that's that, that thought of, of scarcity versus abundance mindset is those go together with the fixed versus growth mindset. People who have an abundance mindset usually also have a growth mindset. Cause I know that if I can help you grow, that will help me grow. Of course. Yeah. And I think, I think we all have the opportunity um, every day to decide if we want to uh, give of ourselves um, and whatever the situation is, we get that choice. Do we want to give of ourselves or not give of ourselves? And um, I, I have this mental thing that I always say, one, one is greater than zero, right? So if, if I can help and support one person, to your point, 10 years down the road, I have no idea if that will, if, if that will have any effect or not. Um, I worked when I was working kind of on the back end, supporting the sales teams, um, I had one interaction with this, this young lady that was kind of on the, the tech support side of, of our company, helping with one of the, the operating systems that we were, we were on. And she had just helped me so much. I, and I, again, I didn't have like a ton of money or whatever. So I, I sent her like this little plant and just as a, Hey, thank you so much for helping. I really appreciate all your support. Sure. Um, like 15 years down the road, she's in a different role and she brought that up in a, she's like, Gavin, you'll never remember this, but you sent me that plan, but just you taking the time to think of me and appreciating and supporting me and what I was trying to do. Um, and, and almost acknowledging the service and acknowledging her support. Uh, she's like, I'll never forget that. And it's just like that one person that you have the opportunity to affect you just never know who that's going to be and when that's going to come to fruition. And you just give of your time, you give of yourself um, as much as you can. And who knows when it'll come back, but it always does. And that one zero thing is so, so important because imagine if you did something, if you affected somebody like that every day, yeah, right. 365 days a year, 10 years down the road, how many people have you touched? How many people have you, and, and you may not know, you know, you're not always going to have that opportunity to yeah. run into that person 15 years down the road. They'll right. say, Hey, this had a, this had an empowering effect on me and I appreciate it. Um, but all those people that don't get the opportunity to tell you about that, but that, that still had a positive effect on their life. And so, um, you're exactly right. You know, spend, spend your day, um, every day, just trying to create a positive effect on somebody. And it could be, it, you can create a positive effect on, even if you don't meet new people every day, you create yeah. a positive effect on your spouse every day, right? Create a positive effect on your kids every day, right? These are things that help us not only grow as people, but that help those people around us grow. Right. Yeah. And, 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 you know, there's, there's a lot of people, there's a lot of sayings out there and, and, and but, you know, surround yourself with, with the people who you, who, you know, that you want to be like, or if you're, you know, if you surround yourself, if you're, 
thinking monetarily, surround yourself with millionaires, you'll, you'll be one too, right? Surround yourself with those type of people, surround yourself with the type of people that build other people up, yeah. um, that have this abundance mindset, that have this growth mindset, that are continuing to, to learn. And I think, you know, one of the greatest examples is, you know, one of the things I love and, and it really, it really, I think, reared its head in COVID was this opportunity that, that we give people all over the world, in the United States, but to be successful and to actually monetize and to, to, to make money based on a growth mindset, right? And so an example would be um, content creators and, and YouTube creators, right? Like 20 years ago, if you wanted to if you wanted to get fit, if you wanted to go to the gym and work out and learn how to lift and learn how to eat right, you'd go to the gym and you'd hire a personal trainer for, you know, 80 bucks an hour, hundred bucks an hour, um, to teach you how to do that. Now you go on YouTube, you can go on Instagram, you go on yeah. TikTok, and you can find a, a million people giving that information away for free. Now that can also be dangerous, right? Right. It's because you shouldn't necessarily go on and do every, you know, fitness tip that somebody on TikTok tells you to do. But at the same time, those people who've had that abundance mindset where they said, you know what, I'm not going to charge people, you know, to learn this information. People should, people should know this information. Yeah. Right. That's what podcasts are. Podcasts are people trying to empower and people trying to enlighten and people trying to educate, yeah. right. The, the masses. Right. And, and for free. And if they can get a small gain from it, if they can monetize it and they can make some money for it, that's great too. But I can tell you that the majority of content creators go out and do it because they really believe in the abundance mindset and they really believe in education. You know, I didn't create this podcast to try to monetize it and make a bunch of money on it. Right. This is because I honestly believe that people should learn these things to improve their lives. Yeah. Right. And so what a great opportunity that we have in today's, you know, technological, you know, advances that we have, that we have all these platforms to be abundance mindset and growth mindset individuals. The, the access to information is ridiculous. Yeah. It, it, there's just so much. I mean, um, Ed Milet, um, Gary V, uh, Andy Frisella, like all these different people that I follow. I mean, they give your, their content for free. Right. I mean, it's free. Gary V teaches you how to make money by flipping items from garage sales right. to eBay. Right? right. Like, like, and he teaches you how to do it and he shows exactly his process. For free. for free. He didn't think like, oh man, well, if I teach everybody this, like, then if I start going garage sailing, like there's not going to be enough stuff left. Like right. he didn't feel like that. He understands the abundance mindset and it's given back to him tenfold, right? He's yeah. a huge, he's a huge creator. He's a huge speaker. People want to talk to, you know, to Gary V. And so I just think that, you know, and again, you know, COVID while people were locked up inside, you know, consuming content. Right. Um, it's been a great opportunity for people to get out there and actually make something of themselves by, by giving back, you know, yeah. um, I, I love, I love YouTube and I love the, the fact that people who, you know, again, 30 years ago, if you were really good at playing the piano, yeah, what could you do with that? I don't know. Like join the symphony. If you were one of the world's best or, be a piano teacher, maybe part-time. I don't know. Like, I, I don't know what you would, you would do. Right? right. But now, I mean, there's, there's tons of content creators that go on and they play piano. They go on, you know, they go on Omegle and play piano for people and they blow up yeah. and they become, you know, very, uh, very, uh, you know, famous or they, uh, or, you know, they, they get all their views and they be, and they're able to monetize that. And I think that's really powerful. And I love that about them because they're sharing, they're able to share their gift with the world. Right. And so anyway, I think this, this, you know, <laughs> build up of, of these, the tech, the technology that we have available to us right now um, has been incredibly empowering to people and has, I think, supported yeah. the growth mindset and this abundance mindset more than we've ever seen. So I love to see the direction that we're headed as a, as a community and as a whole, and as a, as a culture, uh, because I do see that start to move in the right direction. But I think it's important for people to understand that if you're not one of those people, it can be changed. 
for sure. And one thing I want to touch on is like monetizing always comes second to the giving, right? So giving on an open forum, giving it whatever platform for free is because that's what you want to do. The, the money kind of just follows sure. because you are, you are giving um, and helping everybody else. Right. Like, right. Yeah. What do you think um, to move into kind of our last piece on this? What do you think is, how do we train ourselves to be, to have these types of mindsets? If you are in a fixed mindset, like how do you train yourself? If you, if this has been ingrained in you for 20, 30, 40, 50, 60 years, how do you train yourself to, to get to a spot where you have a growth or an abundance mindset? I think that's the first key is, is knowing that you have to be trained um, back into what we're saying we're born with. Right. I like how you said that. I've never heard anyone say that. And I completely agree with you. We, we are born to have that growth mindset, but the only way you do that is you do have to train it. And um, all the podcasts, all the people I follow, everyone um, that I meet, if, if we're talking about how do we develop a mindset, it's you have to have a process and you have to have some sort of a regimen um, that gets you into that, that mode. Uh, it could be as simple as um, controlling your mornings and controlling your evenings, understanding I'm going to do these five things every morning. And then at the end of the night or at the end of the day, I'm going to do these five things, uh, whatever that might be. Um, if that's, you know, right now your gratitudes or if that's um, meditating or if it's breathing, doing breathing exercises, you have to slowly work into building out that process um, so that you are prepared to, to grow. You have to be it. You have to, prep your mindset to basically be willing to grow and show up to grow. Right. Um, so I think that's the most important thing is, is, is understanding that you have certain things in place to, to get you ready to um, be open-minded. Um, and then another thing that I've always kind of st has stuck with me, I read this book by um, Sean Aker called the happiness advantage. And he talks about um, this, thing called the Tetris effect. So um, it, they did a study that a bunch of kids, uh, I think it was at Harvard and they're sitting there and they just made them play Tetris for like 24 hours. And after playing Tetris, like they'd go out into the world and they would just start moving everything around in their world to fit what they just did with this Tetris experiment. So I, what it taught me is, is that what we're putting into our brains can be reprogrammed. Like we can reprogram how our think our thinking starts um, just by what we're putting into our brain. So if if we're continually putting negative information or um, surrounding ourselves with negative people or negative situations, we're pre-programmed to just show up that way. Whereas if we're constantly feeding positive information and following positive people, we show up positive. Like we almost shortcut. Um, our brain's going to shortcut to. Uh, what is easiest for it. And if we've trained it, that positive is easiest, we will lead that way. So I, I think the process part of it is extremely important. That's the only way I think you can have an open mind to grow is if, if your processes are good. Right. And I, and I love that. I think you're exactly, you, I, I know you're exactly right. I mean, we have to think about what we're putting into our brains. And so, you know, because we, we are being taught to feel that way, to think that way. So get the, get the negative out of your life, right? Every time you put something negative in, every time you're, you know, I, I can't, I probably stopped watching the news 20 years ago, right? Because it's, a, it's so negative all the time, right? And, and you see those negative things, those negative influences come into your life and they make you negative. You know, if you're around pessimistic people all the time, yeah. you turn into a pessimist, right? I, I've got friends that, you know, Politically, for example, they, they listen to political shows, right, all the time. And then they sit amongst themselves and they all agree, right? They all agree, which is, which is cool to sit around and talk about things that you agree upon. You and I agree upon mindset. And right. It's fun to talk about that. Right. Okay. But we could also agree on a bunch of negative stuff too. And we could dwell on it. We could talk about how the other political party is awful and we could talk about that all day, right? Yep. And we could choose to do that. Right. But how does that make you? I mean, how, how does that how does that set a trend for the rest of your day, for the rest of your week, for the rest of your life? If you're constantly yep. focusing on the negative, right? And so I think it's so important to to 
highlight that point that you make about what we're putting into our brains every day. Turn off the news, like turn off the junk TV, you know, turn off the things that we watch that, you know, they're, they're like train wrecks, but we can't look away because it's good entertainment. I, I, I agree. I, I, you know, we, we see some of these TV shows, they are, they're great entertainment, but they're so negative. Right. And it's, and, and they will, they make you feel that way and they make you project that way. Yeah. And so I think, you know, if you, if, if, for those of you that are listening, if you didn't listen to, I think it was week three. So two weeks ago, the podcast that we did on goal setting, a big part of this mindset, like Gavin said, is about, you know, if you have those affirmations or you, or you write down or you wake up every morning with something that you're going to do and, and, and to move in that positive direction, right? This comes back to setting a goal. Maybe your goal is to have a growth mindset, then, then, set a, a set a strategy to do that right which is i'm not going to watch um negative tv anymore i'm going to do something to in in basically to educate myself every day to um to grow as a person i'm going to do something to give back once a week you know um whatever that may be and so it, it comes down to setting a goal to maybe be a better person or to encourage a growth mindset or to get yourself to a point. And maybe that means taking something that you've wanted to do for a long time, but you haven't done it because you feel negatively about it, right? Maybe you want to learn to play an instrument. Maybe you want to learn to play golf. Okay. Um, we I do get, want to learn. How right. To play golf. Yeah, I know you should learn how to play golf. You're not very good. Um, so, 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 you know, golf is, is funny, right? Gavin and I both play golf. Right. And the idea is that most people don't want to start playing golf because it's an incredibly difficult sport to learn. Um, and it's an incredibly, and it's an even harder sport to master. And so many of us feel that if we can't master it, why bother? Yeah. Right. Like if you can't, if you can't master, why bother? Why go out and just play terrible golf all the time? Well, I can tell you, Gavin and I play terrible, terrible golf all the time. And, and like, it's fun. We have a great time doing it. And we challenge ourselves to be better every time we're out. Right. Yeah. And so we had to start somewhere. Right. Gavin and I are both better than the average golfer, but we started somewhere as well. Right. So when we go out and we're playing with somebody that's not very good at golf, we understand and we appreciate that they're there. You do. Okay? You have patience. I, I don't know if I have patience. See, have, maybe you need to have a growth mindset <laughs> just, and realize that they're trying to learn, Gavin, you know? So, uh, so think about those things as you, as you know, uh, think about something today that you would, that you'd love to do that you, that you haven't done. Right. And it could be something, it could be a sport. It could be um, reading a book. It could be, uh, you know, playing an instrument. It could be financial. Maybe you've, maybe you've told yourself, you know, I, I want to save up to buy a house or I want to save up to buy a car. And you just keep telling yourself you can't do it. You yeah. can't do it if you don't try. Start by saving, putting, putting $1 aside today. Put $5 aside today. Whatever it may be, take a step in that right direction and start to change the way that your brain is wired. Because Gavin's, you know, talk about the Tetris experience it, it, experiment is exactly right. As you go out into the world, all the things that you've experienced in the prior day or the prior week or your entire life sets the way that you structure your day and you start trying to make, you know, a, a square block fit into a circle hole, it's not going to work. So you have to step outside your comfort zone. Yeah. And, and I think that that's so, uh, so important. So one of the, one of the littlest things that I, when I was first starting to really try to dig into finding positive um, reinforcement in, in my life is at the end of the day, I would just take a sticky note and I would write out one, it could be one or five or whatever, but the one really positive thing that happened in the day. So I was, I was basically trying to train my brain to look and find the positive from the day versus just feeling whatever I was feeling in that moment. I was trying to retrain it to say, look for this every day. And at the end of as, as time went on, my brain naturally started to find the positives. Then I found way more than one a day. Yep. So, and, and it's funny, there's, there's going to be a lot of people listening and people, well, if you're listening already, it means you've made a choice to, to better yourself by listening to a sure. podcast. But there's a lot of people that hear that type of stuff and they go, Oh, that's hooey. Like it doesn't matter. Like writing stuff down, but I can tell you, talk to 
talk to any highly successful person. There's not a single successful person that I go, no, nah, that's stupid. You shouldn't, you shouldn't write down your goals. That's stupid. You shouldn't write down your, you know, your affirmations. You shouldn't write down your wins. You know, you shouldn't talk about your wins. There's not a single person that'll say that. Right. So all the people that are saying that, all the, anybody that ever says to you, oh, Gavin, I can't, why do you write that stuff down? That's weird. That's, that's, that doesn't do anything. Right. Trust me, they're not highly successful. Right. And so um, that's one thing that highly successful people have in common. I, I guarantee it. Yeah. They know, understand their goals. They work towards them. They think about them every day. They have this mindset to accomplish what they want to accomplish. So, um, well, Gavin, this has been uh, enlightening, man. I, I appreciate your time and, and, and the conversation. And uh, I'm glad you were able to, to, to join me today for what I think is one of, yeah, one of the most uh, important topics for, for life. And uh, um, so I want to also point, uh, just give some direction to, to my listeners to uh, that website that we talked about. It's in the, uh, uh, it's in the description for today's episode. Um, it's uh, it's mindsethealth.com. There's some great stuff on there. There's a great article about uh, growth versus fixed mindset. So would definitely encourage you to go check that out and um, appreciate you everybody tuning in today. Gavin, thanks so much again for being thanks here. For having me. I really appreciate it. Appreciate it. And uh, um, make sure catch me next week. We've got another great back to real estate episode. Um, we'll be with my partners, Matt and Charlie. Uh, we're going to talk about some of the best and worst experiences that we've had with our investment real estate. So maybe some fun uh, uh, tenant horror stories and uh, uh, some good stuff as well. So um, join me next week. And uh, in the meantime, remember, live big. Thanks for joining us for this episode of the Live Big Podcast. For even more real estate and investment resources, go to blackyetigroup.com slash resources and download Nick's complete guide to running your own rental properties. Tune back in next week for another episode. And until then, live big. Live Big does not provide investment, legal, or tax advice, and nothing herein should be construed as being financial, legal, tax, or other advice. Live Big does not represent that any securities or services discussed are suitable for any investor. No investment or other decision should be made solely based on the contents or information found on the website or podcast. When making a decision about your investments, you should seek the advice of a professional financial advisor or qualified expert.